<laughs> I, I know. I know I'm a crazy person. I know I'm a crazy person. Arthur knows I'm a crazy person. Let the record show. I love the improv and I love Arthur. Arthur had me at improv. I was like, oh, I see what's going on here. And I am so irritated right now because I have been pranked. I can't believe how many times I've been pranked. <laughs> Today alone. But I was just checking my schedule, and normally on Tuesdays and Wednesdays and Thursdays and Fridays and Mondays when I teach, normally I teach from 2 to 2.45. <laughs> but today, for the first time in four months, give or take, I had to teach from 2 to 2.55. Now, I was so excited because I realized next Tuesday I'm done after my 2 p.m. hour. And so I put in my calendar that I'm leaving there at 2.45. And then I've come to find out today, and I stumble over my word, I come to find out today that actually I'm working from 2 to 2.55 on Tuesday. So that means I am potentially now going to be late to the improv happy hour open mic. Damn! The youth of America love me, my friends. Make America skate. Again, people, if I have one message, it's not mine at all. It's Lil Wayne's or whoever came up with that. Make America skate again, people. Thank you, Blood Orange. Thank you, Yell. You know, I had a student today who wanted me to try some of her sour flush candy. which is a miniature toilet filled with a sour powder, hence a sour flush, and it comes equipped with not one but two toilet bowl brushes that are strawberry-flavored lollipops. My student gave me one of the lollipops and took it back again before I realized what they were, that they weren't lollipops. Well, they were lollipops, but they were meant to be toilet brushes and that she and I were meant to be eating the sour contents of a toilet. I'd be lying if I said I didn't feel 110% seen in this encounter um, for a lot of reasons actually 13 at least here's the tea people I know Tayari Jones in fact I learned from her I was her student you cannot win the presidency of the Union States of America without going through Georgia, my friends. And we all know the king of Georgia is Tayari, or is that Tayar Tayari or Tayar, Tayar, Tayari, Tayari is how I always have pronounced it. Tayari, Jones, and I haven't seen that bitch in years. But she made me who I am, and Toni Morrison made her who she is, and I taught 
Tony Morrison to students at Gettysburg College where they sacked me for being too good of a teacher. And four years later, I just won a teaching award for best teacher given to me, not by management, but by my colleagues, people. That's the best award you can get. And everybody knows that. You know, and it's funny, I spent the last four years training myself to speak without a stutter, to not be aphasic, to be able to connect, to be able to say what I want to say every time I want to speak. But I trained at the very high level of the Hollywood improv. Also third wheel. Hollywood or podcast or studio, whatever the fuck it's called. Thanks to everybody. So when I'm just talking to people, I can be a little bit rough. I got to hand it to the Biden administration. You know, giving up the reins of power has really released them. On the one hand, right, they actually tweeted a serious an accurate criticism of the Israeli state's leadership of its ongoing slaughter in the Holy Land. But this has been the issue all along, right? It doesn't serve the current government of Israel for the war to end. (laughs) So I'm glad the Biden administration put out a serious criticism today. I wish they would follow that criticism by dropping the funding that allows this war to continue. But, you know, sooner or later that will happen. As the Netanyahu um, smote rich, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, um, alliance continues to have its way. As apparently it will. Then Biden coughed up the word haberdasher. I like that guy's haberdasher. I was like, you know what, Biden? You're not half bad after all if you can cough up such a word as haberdasher. Right? I like this guy's dress. Again, not bad military dress, right? I like this guy's appearance. Okay, Biden. Although Biden didn't serve in the military either is what I'm understanding now, right? Um, Speaking of which, J.D. Vance, wow. I had no idea. (laughs) Somehow all the veterans I know never communicated to me that you only qualify as a veteran that you only qualify as serving your country if you are actually on the ground in an active combat zone. That this is actually being litigated right now is insane, people. Really? Not to mention what I posted to Threads earlier today about how If he held the post, Walt, that is, if that's how you pronounce his name, of Command Sergeant Major at the time that he no longer was serving as gerund, right? People who speak Spanish understand this, right? In the process of retiring, he still held that rank. That means he did retire at that rank even if his official rank in retirement is different, right, Master Sergeant? It's not that hard, people. I know English is a very difficult language. I teach it for a living now. But I suppose I've always taught it to myself as a living, right? It's the art of living. After all, that's called writing. That's called design. That's called art. It's called Arthur. Right? That's called the improv. Right. If J.D. Vance's definition that seems to be accruing some value at the moment, insanely enough, is now the definition of veterans, 
right? If that's now how the status of veterans is defined, then that would disenfranchise the majority of our veterans, right? Number one, number two, what's the average time that people serve in the National Guard? What's the average time that people serve in the active military? You know what I mean? Like 24 years seems like a lot of time compared to the negligible amount of time that J.D. Vance served, you know? Meanwhile, the Delhi Beast doesn't even understand the difference between eyeliner and eyelashes you know it's just like gosh people wake up you know maybe you can fucking fold some of my clothes do you know what I mean jelly bean that's why I don't like doing my own laundry people I don't like folding my clothes. It's so annoying. Which is like why I like, it's not like why, it is why I like to hang them. You know, and that was the whole practice in my own dressing performance from four years ago till now. It was all about public dressing, right? It was all about being myself in public. It was all about being in drag. You know what I mean? It's like, I famously did not like wearing costumes for Halloween because I always just wanted to be myself. You know what I mean? Thank you, Hollywood, for seeing this. You know, thank you to my professors for seeing this. Thank you very specifically to Kate Blanchett for seeing this. You know, and for Hilda Queeley for seeing this. You know, it's just... You know, I never wanted to wear a mask. You know... I didn't even like drag for a long period of time because I just felt like there's nothing new there, but I had to get past the drag piece of it. Do you know what I mean? I also recognized that all of the people in my life, my partner at the time, right, Scott, I'm sure Arthur is into, I mean, I used to fondly call it Drew Paul's Rag Race. Why? Because I was, I, 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 I drank the RuPaul Kool-Aid the first time around. Do you know what I mean? Like, I was I, I was old enough that I was ready. Okay, been there, done that. Thank you, RuPaul, for helping change the world. Do you know what I mean? Like, that was a really... This is the thing. Like, I would love to have a conversation with RuPaul about this, but I think that RuPaul speaks on this all the time, which is that that was a really interesting moment, right? I mean, when you think about we are the world. Can you imagine... Right? The Olympics are now being attacked. And look at LA's answer, by the way. They're like, we are putting out major stars. But yeah, I mean, I think that's what performance is, right? It's about going to extremes, but seeing if you can pass, right? That's what I learned from Paris is Burning. And I think that's why, you know, I criticize the f that film because instead of exposing that element of performance, right, that in the ballroom scene of the 1980s, right, and 1990s, it was very much about, right, not being yourself, right, but passing, right? as something else, which is acting. But some people pass more easily than others, right? Some people are willing to give up more than others. Some people have no choice but to pass. You know, some people have no choice but not to pass, you know? And, you know, I'm really glad that I can live in a time period where 
I'm not just liked and loved for being gay, but I'm actually celebrated for being it, right? People like the fact that I don't give a fuck. You know, but that's because all of, you know, as I start to bring this mini monologue to a close, that is because all of the people I've always looked up to always spoke their mind. That to me was always the American way, right? Walt Whitman spoke his mind. Ellen Ginsburg spoke his mind. David Wojnarowicz spoke his mind. Keith Haring spoke his mind, right? Woody Allen even spoke his mind, but I'm trying to keep this right on the white, queer, male tip, motherfuckers, because that's where I can cut the line of intersectionality, right? Because the fact that I'm queer, and I don't forget that for a minute, you know, my asshole twitches, my friend, it's very sensitive. It's a gift and it's a curse. But I choose to see my cup as half full and not half empty. And I am going back to the improv on Tuesday, motherfuckers. And I might be bringing a life-size replica of a baby dinosaur with me. (laughs) Okay? Peace in the Middle East, and I do mean that. I also might be bringing a small, cute child with me. Ciao for now. I've been Sean MB, and you've been simply, well, enchanté. <laughs> I am.